Hi, welcome back. And this will be a full review of the Roomba 980. Just a quick background. The 980 was the first iRobot vacuum. They have the smart navigation, which means it goes in straight lines. Unlike the previous generation Roombas, like the 600 and 800 series that only pinball around. This is possible thanks to the top-mounted camera and the SLAM algorithm that enables it to navigate in a more efficient manner. iRobot did an excellent job in combining efficiency and thoroughness with the 980. While other brands like Roborock do this by going around up to three times, Roomba robots rely on what iRobot calls Dirty Tech to do extra passes on areas with more debris. It's a feature present in all of their robot vacuums and something you don't see in other brands because iRobot has a patent on it. If you look at this overhead shot, once the 980 detects this dirty patch, the sensor kicks in and goes back and forth multiple times. This technology is a big reason why Roombas do so well on carpets. As with navigation, the 980 starts cleaning the middle portions of the room first before going around the edges. You can actually enable or disable edge cleaning through the iRobot Home app if you want to save on time. It also provides the option to the user to do a one or two pass run and an automatic option where the robot will decide based on the size of the room. I tested it around tight quarters under chair legs and it didn't have any issues navigating through and around tight zones. Just remember to remove any wires on the way or it will stop it on its tracks. The 980 also uses the same extractors as the 890 so it is more resistant to hair tangles compared to the older Roombas like the 690 as you'll see later on in this video. Next we look at airflow. The Roomba 980 has a lot with over 19 CFM at performance mode and 13.74 CFM in eco mode which is up there with all of the robot vacuums I've tested so far. This airflow translates well in cleaning hard floors and carpets where it was able to make clean passes. The 980 was able to pick up various types of debris from sand, pet litter, to large ones like Cheerios and Fruit Loops. I'm really pleased with how the 980 was able to pick up debris cleanly thanks to the rubber extractors and the dirt detect system that does extra passes on dirtier areas. If I could nitpick, it would be the fast spinning side brush that tends to scatter debris as you'll see on screen. But this is less of an issue than it was with the 690 because of the smart navigation. But I don't think this should be a concern for daily cleanups since you won't be dealing with this much volume regularly. In the deep cleaning test, where I rub 100 grams of sand on mid-pile carpet, it was able to pick up an average of 91.9% .9 in two tests. It's one of the best robot vacuums in this category and better than some stick vacuums I've tested. Again, the dirty tech is a big factor why it cleans embedded dirt at this rate. You'll see the robot going back and forth over the area up to three times on several locations. This is on top of the two-pass run that I've set in the iRobot Home app prior to the test. Cleaning sand on hard floors is another pro as it was able to pick up 100% in two tests. I'm impressed by how much sand the rubber extractors were able to pick up during the initial pass. You'll also notice the dirty tech kicking in doing additional passes. Edge cleaning was not great because of the narrow brush roll and the round shape. But this is an issue with most robot vacuums that have a round frame. It did well in the hair wrap test with hardly anything wrapping on the extractors after the hard floor test using 7 inches of human hair. But more hair wrap on the extractors with longer strands of hair up to 7 inches after the carpet test. So the rubber extractors can resist tangles of up to 7 inches much better than the more traditional brush design of the 600 series. Overall, the biggest strength of the 980 is how thorough it is at cleaning floors while maintaining efficiency with a smart navigation. Unfortunately, one downside with the high airflow is the noisy motor. The 980 recorded up to 74.2 decibels on the sound meter in performance mode. It's also loud even in eco mode at 66 decibels. It won't be practical to use this robot at daybreak or late in the evening. The 980 has a 3300 mAh lithium ion battery that will run for up to 120 minutes. I believe it's larger than the 960's 1800 mAh battery that has a shorter runtime of up to 75 minutes. It measures around 3.6 inches tall, shorter than the Roborock S5 Max and was able to fit under this shoe rack that had a clearance of 3.75 inches. Cleaning rug 0.5 inches thick won't be a problem as the 980 was able to climb over this blue rug. However, it may not go over thicker rugs around 0.8 inches or more unless it hits the right angle. The 980 has the iADAPT 2.0 navigation that can draw maps but it can't save them. So consumers won't have access to containment features like the keep out zones or no go zones. There's also no selective room cleaning. Only the Roomba S9 and i7 will have those features. This robot has a generous dustbin at over 0.6 liters 
What I like about it is a large working room when you open it, making it very easy to empty and clean. However, you can't wash the 980 or 960 dust container since part of the motor is inside. It has a high efficiency filter, which is basically a HEPA filter, so it should provide good filtration, better than a Roomba with a standard filter. Please note that the filter isn't washable, but you can use a handheld to clean debris sticking on it or tap it on a trash bin to extend its service life. The 980 is compatible with the iRobot Home app. Setup is easy and the app is quite responsive. The interface is simple but it doesn't show the live map when the robot is running since it only has iAdapt 2.0. There are three power options, automatic, performance, and eco mode. You can leave it at auto for the right balance of power and runtime. In this mode, the robot only increases suction when it goes over carpet or rugs. Another feature I like in the app is the option to pause the robot when the bin is full. So when the dust container is full, the robot automatically docks and won't run until you empty it and press the clean button again. It's like a fail-safe feature that prevents messy mishaps caused by running the robot with a full bin. Like what I've said earlier, you have the option to go with a 1 or 2 pass run or set it on automatic. A 1 pass run is great for daily cleaning if you wanted to do a quick cleanup. The 2 pass run is more thorough but it takes longer. It's an excellent setting to use for deep cleaning carpets. There's also a scheduling feature where you can ask the robot to clean automatically at a specific time, but you can only schedule to clean once a day. Once you've set the schedule, there's no option to set more runs on the same day. The 980 is also compatible with devices like Alexa and Google Assistant if you prefer to use voice. But note that you can't ask it to clean a specific area of your home like the living room since it only has iAdapt 2.0. That doesn't have the map saving feature, so this is only available in higher end options like the S9 and i7. Unfortunately, the Roomba 980 is no longer available in the iRobot website. Only the 960 is, but there are some downgrades like the shorter runtime. The good news is it's cheaper and has the same great performance on carpet. The 985 is a similar product to the 980 if you want the same high airflow that it brings to the table. To conclude this review, the Roomba 980 is an excellent mid-price option for consumers looking for a smart navigating robot that can clean hard floors and carpets with efficiency and thoroughness. I'd say it's more thorough than a Roborock S5 Max thanks to the Dirt Detect system. However, it lacks containment features like keep out zones so you'll have to block the robot physically to keep it away from off-limit areas or use a virtual wall. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about the Roomba 980 and I'll answer them ASAP. If this video has been helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.